Hello, and welcome to the special CBTV interview with Dennis Williams. Dennis is an investment advisor representative with Brookstone Capital Management, who specializes in working with pre-retirees and retirees since 2007. In addition, he is on the board of his local NAFA professional organization, and he serves as contemporary worship leader in the villages. Dennis, welcome back to CBTV. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me back today. Good to have you here again. Glad you could make time for us. Well, today I want to talk to you about something that uh, everybody's interested in. And we've all heard that in life there's only two guarantees in life, and everyone knows what it is, death and taxes. Now, death is somewhat uncontrollable, but many people are unaware of the fact that they can reduce or even eliminate some types of taxes with proper planning. So what type of taxes do you try and help to reduce or eliminate for your clients? Well, one of the taxes that we try to reduce is income taxes. Uh, another tax we might try to reduce are capital gains taxes. Uh, third tax might be Social Security taxes. Mm -hmm. They may be paying taxes on their Social Security income mm -hmm. needlessly. And then finally, estate taxes. A lot of people are, are um, faced with paying estate taxes, and that's subject to change in the future. It may not be subject to it now, but we might want to look ahead for, for the future if the, the laws change. Well, that's, that's a lot of taxes that uh, could potentially be reduced. And I know every client I've ever had in my lifetime, and I'm sure yours, they're like, hey, I want to pay only the legal amount I owe the IRS. But if I can legally save a dollar and put it in my pocket, I'm better off than an extra dollar in the government's pocket. So let's talk about each of these very quickly then, Dennis. You mentioned to start with um, income taxes. So uh, what are some strategies perhaps that you help your clients to reduce or even eliminate some income taxes in their life? Sure, Matt. One of the methods we use is they may have assets or, ta or income coming in that they're really not using, they're really not spending, it's just right. money that comes in. So we may try to set that into another uh, location where that can be put off to some time in the future. Hmm. Uh, perhaps when they really need that income, then, then worry about the taxes then. We have several different uh, areas that we can um, position money to, to, to take advantage of that. So are you talking about maybe a vehicle where it uh, defers the tax until later? That's correct. We're talking about tax deferral. Exactly. Okay. All right. So let that money kind of compound and build mm -hmm. and uh, don't lose the interest part, any interest part of it due to taxation. Let all mm -hmm. that money compound and build and, and then take it out in the future where you'll have a bigger pot because there wasn't taxes taken out throughout the years. And also they've earned uh, growth on what they would have paid taxes. So mm. you, it's like triple growth. You're, you're mm. earning the money that you would have had to send in for taxes. You're earning interest on 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 top of interest so you're, you're really exponentially growing your your portfolio by putting it aside and and putting those taxes off to the future when you really need the money yeah let it grow and, and uh, exponentially grow and as an investment advice representative you can probably help people with maybe some tax-free strategies on tax-free bonds municipal bonds perhaps would that be something that also that you can help folks with yes in, in appropriate situations for we have some uh, it's a, actually a portfolio of, of, of several different bonds, which kind of mm. spreads out the, the risk, if you will. Right. And so they, we put the money there, and anything that's gained from that is, um, is tax-free. Hmm. People like that. <laughs> I don't think I've met an American yet that turns out anything is tax-free, or at least tax-deferred. So that's good news. All right, now let's talk about ways to reduce or eliminate capital gains. Now, capital gains tax used to be 28%. The now maximum, as long as you keep it a year, is 15%. But with the government under a huge budget crunch, spending more than they're bringing in in taxes, we all know that the tax brackets, capital gains brackets, are going to go up in the future. So how can you help your clients to reduce or even maybe eliminate capital gains taxes? It's all a matter of planning. You know, planning for, for those particular funds, when do you need it? Um, it's sitting down with the client, finding out exactly what their needs are, and, and, and planning a strategy to how we can uh, stretch those, th those taxes out or, or perhaps eliminate them through some other um, type of products or other type of investment strategies. Okay, so you do have some effective strategies to, again, reduce or eliminate 
capital gains taxes. Yes, we do. Because there are some folks that bought stocks years and years ago, maybe Microsoft or GE in the beginning years. They've had it for 50, 60 years, and, and now they might need that money. They don't want to necessarily pass those stocks on to heirs, but they have a normally a pretty big capital gains tax mm -hmm. bill, so you can help them there. Yes. Okay. Just recently, I had a client uh, who, unfortunately, his wife passed away. And he was, he was totally unaware that he could um, take advantage, in a sense, mm -hmm. that um, he could take the step up in basis because their, mm. their stocks were owned jointly. Right. So he was not aware, his advisor that he was working with did not explain to him mm. that half of those funds he would be able to take um, the step up in basis and therefore, therefore save the growth on those money. So I was help, able to help him through that situation in a very difficult time but that yeah. at least brought some um, help some, some some good news yes yeah you're right a lot of folks don't know if you own a, an asset together as husband and wife as an example and that asset appreciates whether it's real estate uh, home stocks mutual funds bonds whatever that if one passes away their half of the gain is uh, they get a fully, as you said, stepped up valuation so that the surviving spouse could sell that and only pay really a uh, tax on the half of the gain, not the full gain. Correct. Okay, good strategies there. Now, let's talk about a tax that most retirees absolutely hate to pay, and that's Social Security taxation. I know we have all heard that when Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, set up Social Security in the system back in 1935, gave a great big promise to that generation that uh, as they put money into it every week when they retired, they would have a monthly check coming to them and they'd never have to pay taxes on that money. Well, in 1983, Congress changed that, and then 1993, President Clinton and, and Congress changed it a little higher. So now up to 85% of your Social Security income could be put in a pool to be taxed. And so most retirees, as I'm sure you know, Dennis, hate having, they, they consider it being double taxed. Paid income taxes all your life, now you're gonna pay taxes on Social Security. So mm -hmm. how, you do have some strategies, I should say, on how to reduce or eliminate tax on Social Security, is that right? That is right, we have, we have several strategies. One of the things in the planning process is looking at the individual's entire uh, financial situation. Uh, they'll, I'll ask them to bring in their, their uh, tax returns from the previous years. And we'll go through that, we'll anal analyze that, we'll look for ways of, of monies coming in that they're not using. Uh, let me just give you an example. Okay. W one of the safest investments out there and people love because it has FDIC on it. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they have money in these CDs and they're wonderful vehicles. They're safe, they're protected, and they love to put money there. It may not be making a whole lot right now, but they know their money's safe and that's good. Mm -hmm. But they're bringing, they're making that little bit of interest and then, but they're also having to pay tax on that. Right. And I've actually sat down with people that's getting a lot of money coming in from the CDs or they're having to take their interest from their uh, investments. Mm -hmm. And they don't really need it, they're not spending it. Right. So we're able to take and reposition those dollars in, into, into another vehicle depending on the situation as to mm -hmm. what that vehicle is. And we can re actually eliminate those, those interests uh, on their tax returns. Hmm. And again, we're deferring the, the taxes, we're deferring that growth so that we're, we're growing and earning on our growth, we're earning on those taxes that we would have paid, and down the road when they need those funds, they'll be there. Well, that's a great strategy uh, to either eliminate or reduce, or at least defer the tax on Social Security. So you can help people reduce income taxes as well as Social Security at the same time, is that what I'm hearing? That's, that's exactly right. Wow. We look at the whole picture, we look at their tax returns, and we help them analyze that and determine where are some areas here that, that we can make some adjustments. Yeah. You know, what, what are you using these funds for? Are you using these funds? And if not, is there somewhere better that would be fit you better? Mm -hmm. You know, some people are w concerned about access. And so, well, we can still do that. We can still maintain that access, but at the same time, uh, either put off those taxes forever or put those taxes off to sometime in the future. Well, it's good to know at least that there are some effective strategies that uh, can help reduce or eliminate taxes. And there are, as we talked about, a bunch of them. The last one is the estate tax. And that's another tax that many Americans get very upset about because they paid income taxes and sales taxes and property taxes. And then if your estate's big enough, Uncle Sam wants uh, up to like about a half of the value of the estate. 
Now we have an estate tax exemption right now of what is it, 3.5 million or five million? What, what is it today? Do you it's know? It's currently five million. Five million dollars. Yes. Okay. Um, but it used to be a few years ago just one million dollars. That's right. It was one million, then it was two million, then three millions. It keeps changing. <laughs> That's kind of like the government. They change their mind quite often, right? That's change exactly the rules. Right. So with the government being in such a tight financial situation, there's maybe a high probability that uh, the estate tax exemption might be reduced back down to a million or so. What, whatever it is, whether somebody you know, dies with $10,000 or 10 million or 100 million, they really want all their money to go to their heirs or their charities of choice. So uh, you have, do you have some strategies to help reduce or eliminate uh, estate taxes for folks? We do have some strategies. It, it, it takes some, some planning to do that. If you have a, a couple, you actually have $10 million, because it's $5 mm. million each, that you can prepare in a way or plan in a way where they could take advantage of that. And you know, we sit down sometimes with, with some attorneys that we know in the area to help uh, put this plan together so that it, it is going to, to, to work. We don't have to be surprised when, when the death event comes along, we're not surprised. We, we'll make sure that it's all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted. But um, there are strategies. There's some, some uh, revocable or irrevocable type uh, insurance products that we could put them in to, to um, expand that um, amount. And then, you know, again, we talked about this changing. It's constantly changing. So yeah. um, this is something I talk about with my clients every year when we get together. Hmm is you know, we don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but if, if this was to happen, then maybe we could do this. We kind of talk about it so it doesn't catch us by surprise when it is changed down the road. Well, what's the old saying, Dennis? There's nothing in life so consistent as change. That's correct. <laughs> and uh, with the government, things are always changing. That's why the tax code keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, it's good to know that there are some effective strategies, as you mentioned, how to reduce income taxes, uh, capital gains taxes, estate taxes, and Social Security taxes. So I'm sure many of our viewers would want to find out from you personally on how they can perhaps reduce some of those taxes. So Dennis, again, thanks for coming and allowing us to interview you on CBTV. Thank you, Matt. It's a okay. pleasure. For more information about Dennis Williams or his financial services practice, contact him at 352-245-6493 or visit him on the web at www.williamsuncoast.com.